love those you teach. Everything the Savior did throughout His earthly ministry was motivated by love. As we strive to be true followers of Christ, we can be filled with this same love, in John 13 34-35, it reads, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. And in Moroni chapter 7 verse 47 through 48 it says, But charity is the pure love of Christ, and it endureth forever, and whoso is found possessed of it at the last day, it shall be well with him. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, pray unto the Father with all the energy of heart, that ye may be filled with this love, which he hath bestowed upon all who are true followers of his Son, Jesus Christ, that ye may become the sons of God, that when he shall appear we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, that we may have this hope, that we may be purified even as he is pure. Amen. When the Savior's love is in our hearts, we seek every possible way to help others learn of Christ and come unto him. Love becomes the motivation for our teaching. The Savior saw divine potential in everyone he taught. Most people in Jericho thought they knew all they needed to know about Zacchaeus. He was a publican and a tax collector, the chief publican, in fact, and he was rich. Clearly, they thought, he must be dishonest and corrupt. But Jesus looked on Zacchaeus's heart and saw an honorable son of Abraham, in Luke 19 verses 1 to 10. The Savior saw people not just as they appeared to be, but as they really were and as they could become. In unpolished fishermen like Simon, Andrew, James, and John, he saw the future leaders of his church. In the feared persecutor Saul, he saw a chosen vessel who would preach his gospel before kings and nations, in Acts 9 verses 10 to 15. And in you and each person you teach, the Savior sees a son or daughter of God with limitless potential. Among the people you teach, you are likely to have some who seem faithful and converted and others who seem uninterested or even rebellious. Be careful not to make assumptions based only on what you see. The Holy Ghost can help you see in each person some of what the Savior sees and help you begin to love them the way He does. Questions to ponder, think about each person you teach, and ponder how Heavenly Father and Jesus feel about each one. What might they see in him or her? How will these thoughts affect the way you teach that person?